Summer Games Fest recently streamed live, and I personally thought it was solid. I want to get to why exactly I thought it was solid, but first, let's zero in on the ancient Mayan concept of anger. Specifically, anger directed at Jeffrey. Before the show started, information came out about how adverts are priced at Summer Games Fest, and I saw a lot of anger about how scummy this is and how the event is anti-indie, because naturally, smaller than medium indie companies slash individuals can't afford that. Also, the cost of a booth at Playdays seems to be in the 20 to 50k range, depending on the days you spend there, but from what I could read in this, it's pretty much on par with what E3 would cost, and obviously E3 has been wrong. It stinks. It's a stinky dead corpse. Now, try to keep in mind that Roughly 45 to 50 minutes of indie games took up the live stream, and the rest was unindie. Whether that's Innisloth being cool as hell and opening up a publishing company, whether that's a new game from a respected developer, or a new game from people who haven't proven themselves as much yet. It is 100% valid to criticize a gaming trailer event thingy for not being friendly towards the smaller developers, but I looked into it a bit more and this excerpt suggests that there are free slots available for those smaller studios, and no one really brought that up. Hell, Innisloth basically used their money to take the time and show those exact indie games that otherwise wouldn't get that widespread audience. It sucks that being able to show your game to that wide audience requires you to already be somewhat successful and have secured enough funds to be able to pay for that. Only indie developers upload their trailers on YouTube, on Twitter, every day, and they don't get seen. Meaning there is absolute proven value in getting this chance as opposed to uploading a trailer online and hoping it gets seen. So. I gotta say, is it really surprising an event with millions of eyes on it and limited room time is gonna have that high bar? Marketing is inherently expensive. Now what I'm trying to get out with my little breakdown is that this event was largely filled with indie games. It just straight up was. So when people say this was a waste, two hours of nothing, shitty, whatever, it feels like a big slight against the indie studios that did have things to show. I know it's not the same person saying this necessarily, but I'm starting to think a lot of you people don't really care about indie games all that much. Not as much as you pretend to. Especially when indie games are constantly weaponized against the metric shit ton of AAA games out there. Either that, or it's coming from individuals who are just on a bandwagon. They're not worth listening to, but they're so wrong, I just have to bring up how illogical their verbal diarrhea is. It's almost like if the show isn't filled with banger reveals or bombshells, or just appealing to that one specific block, then the whole game fest of summer will be deemed as a pile of trash. Again, it's probably not the same person with both opinions, but a lot of these opinions get a shit ton of agreement. So there's clearly a shared popular feeling on both subjects, and there's gonna be some overlap there. I guess what I'm trying to say with all this is that the hate for Summer Game Fest feels somewhat Forced. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not Jeff Keighley Ultra Defender 3000. Sure, the two of us are good friends who've interfaced in the Iron Fist tournament, but I do feel I'm capable of being unbiased. If the issue was that every game looked generic or, or the same, I would understand, indie or AAA. But that wasn't really the case here. There was a healthy amount of variety all around. Tr try skipping to any point in the show. For God's sake, it fucking opened with a LEGO Horizon game on Switch. Of all places, I'm just kind of bothered when you see this much dogging on an event and people are never specific about which parts of it they disliked. It just was bad, all of it. No specific part. Okay, maybe the part that with that guy from Thor 2, that part sucked. This year was just one time where I felt kind of confused, because even just focusing on AAA, there were good reveals here, some eye-catching trailers, some disgusting slops, so I'm not saying this rivals E3 at its best, I'm just saying, it was fine, it wasn't bad, wasn't even boring, 
Also, E3 was a clump of all the biggest studios showing games. It's a little unfair to compare this one event to an assortment of showcases. The pacing was largely improved in Hot Games Fest 2024, until it got to Valorant and Skynet and these guys just wouldn't go away. I could understand that not every game is gonna appeal to you and you shouldn't pretend to be interested by something just because it's made by an independent developer. That's toxic positivity. But at that point, I just feel it's kind of a waste to go to a game show event and complain about how the games aren't games you personally want to see. The aim here is that someone will see a game they do like and that will pique their interest. Someone else will see something they like and that will pique their interest. The problem in past years was too many CG trailers, not enough variety, nor real <gasps> moments to keep you engaged through. Basically, it was boring when you consider the whole live stream. In these aspects, I really do feel the show has improved. It's like this, with the Xbox showcase, Xbox fans will tune in. With Nintendo, Nintendo fans will tune in. And so on and so forth with the others. Being a general reveal show, just like the Game Awards, is I think what causes this dissonance. You know I'm right, because that's a fancy word. I don't know what it means, but it does make me look smart. You bring together so many different types of tastes and it results in an audience that all want very different things. It's not an issue for those of us who play more than 10 games, but you've got to remember, Call of Duty, sells a bajillion copies. That's the type of guy we're dealing with here. I do have the brain rot of Sonic infesting me, so maybe I'm somewhat biased, but I'm trying to look at it from a general point of view. And all things considered, there were many promising games displayed here. There were games for the general audience, there were games for the casual audience, and there were games that appeal to the more hardcore audience even. Also, I decided to click on a video t talking about how trash the event was and went to the comments because I was curious on what exactly went wrong and hint, it was the walk. I'm not going to show you what video or who said what, but rather reflect what various members of the comment section were saying. Man, Killer Bean looked amazing. Man, Sonic X Shadow looked amazing. Man, Black Wukong looked amazing. Man, Power Rangers look looked amazing. Man, Skate looked amazing. Or demonic, perchance. I don't know. I'll decide when the reviews come out. Man, Dragon Ball looked amazing. Man, Civ 7 looked like the opening cutscene. Man, Common Deliverance 2 looked amazing. Man. No. More Room in Hell 2 looked amazing. Man, Monster Hunter looked amazing. Man, Pal World looks like shit. Man, Metaphor looked amazing. Man, Alan Walk 2 DLC looked amazing. Man, Street Fighter 6 DLC looked amazing. Despite the fact that Multiple games there looked amazing. The event was horseshit. There wasn't a single good game shown there, especially the indie games I have not played. Those were the worst part. Modern gaming is dead. I cannot wait to pre-order Call of Duty 52 Black Ops 7 coming to Nintendo Switch this holiday 2024.